Today I'd like to show you an alternative use for our fantastic new cutting boards. Sure, they're great as cutting boards, but they're also great as a charcuterie board. So what I'd like to make for you today is a very, very classic charcuterie board with cheese and meats. You've probably had this at parties or maybe even made them yourself. Now, before I start laying out my ingredients, I'd like to share with you a couple rules that I like to follow when I'm putting a charcuterie board together. Because contrary to what our accounting department might say when they see my expense reports, I do like rules. I think it's really good to help focus our creativity. And when you go to the grocery store, you have so many options to choose from. How do you pick the right one? Well, maybe these rules can help uh, refine your search, give you a little more direction. Rule number one, when I'm making a charcuterie board, buy something you like. This is super important. I'm gonna give you a couple reasons. Number one, you're paying for it. So make sure that what's on that board, you like. The second reason is if you're taking this board to let's say like a potluck, if you buy stuff you like, you're sure to be able to eat at that potluck. I've had that happen a few times where there wasn't much good food there but what I brought. The third reason is if you're lucky, the party might even cancel, then you get to eat the whole charcuterie board. Believe it or not, that happened to me about a year ago. It was my father's birthday. He uh, had to cancel the party as everybody was bringing everything. I had spent $150 on different charcuterie. Well, me and my family ate like kings for two days. So we enjoy that kind of opportunity. There are a couple rules I want to share with you too. When you're building a charcuterie board, there's a couple rules that I like to follow. Um, these are categories of different foods that you want to put on your, on your board. Number one, of course, put meats on there. Number two, you want to add things that are cheeses. Of course, we're going to show some of that. Rule number three, you want to add some produce to this. It's going to brighten your whole board up, give you some different colors and different textures. Number four, add something that's crunchy to this. It's going to give you a little more texture. We're talking things like nuts and crackers and seeds. They'll give a real pop to your board. The fifth thing you want to do is add like a jam or a jelly or something that people can experiment with and dip the cheeses in. The final thing is you want to add a garnish. Now don't worry about writing these things down. We're going to send you an email after our class that has all these rules printed out for you and a couple others that uh, are things you'll find really fun and entertaining. So now let's build our board. So what I've done is I've already started plating my board and I call this my salami river. The reason I do this is it kind of breaks the boards up into quadrants and for me it makes it a little easier to manage. Now my family, this is not near enough meat for a charcuterie board. So I'm going to add a couple other things like this. This is serrano ham. If you've never had it before, serrano ham is very similar to prosciutto except it comes from Spain. Now we're going to add our cheeses. This is that golden gouda that Steve told us about earlier. A really, really delicious cheese. This is that Lester that we talked about from Wisconsin. And finally, here's our brie. I'm so excited about this. I'm a big fan of brie. The next thing we're gonna add, we're gonna start adding our fruits. So, I have a couple different things. Here in this well, this very unique distinctive well, which is our juice well, I'm gonna use it for something a little different. I'm gonna put my olives in here. I love olives especially an olive mix like this that has all sorts of really fun, unique flavors. A couple other things I want to add. Here are some grapes. I'm going to put this right up here by my golden gouda. Apricots. These pair really well with this camembert brie. These are all things that you can find at a grocery store. Brighter the color, the fresher uh, the produce it's going to be, the better your board is going to be. I'm going to put some raspberries down here too, because Brie just loves raspberries. Now, I have something that I made. I think you'll like it if you try it at home. This is called a Peppadou pepper. They're not that easy to find, but they're worth the search. In here, I've squirted just a little bit of goat cheese, and on top is a little bit of thyme. It's a fantastic pop of flavor in your mouth. I love these. I make them for every party I have. So I'm just going to pop a few of these on here. Give us a little more color. Great. We've already got 
our meat, our cheese, we got our vegetables. Now I'm gonna add that uh, kind of jam or that dip I was telling about, and that is a clementine dip. This is gonna pair really brilliantly with our brie. So I'm gonna pop that right here. Now we need something with texture. We need something with crunch. So I'm gonna take some crackers. I'm gonna put them up here. And I'm gonna fill in some of the space here with some nuts. I love smoked almonds. They're gonna pair really well with this cheese down here. I have some pecans. These are, have nice little salt to them, roasted pecans. Put those right there. Fill it my space in here. The last thing, and this is number six, we're gonna garnish. So I have some very classic garnishes here. This is some rosemary. I'm just gonna put it right there. Rosemary is a really nice garnish because it has a great perfume to it. It gives us a nice pop of color. It makes the board just smell a little bit better. So I'm gonna pop that right there. And then finally, I have what is called in the culinary world, nasturtium. These are edible flowers. Now, if you have these around, I think it's really fun to add some edible flowers to your, uh, to your board because it gives it a nice pop of color. And well, at least for my family, there's, there's that one brother-in-law who will eat like anything. And so when you take this out, he looks at it and says, oh man, those are flowers. Uh, who's gonna eat that? And everybody says, hey, you gotta try and eat that. And he eats it and it becomes like a big thing. So here is my charcuterie board. I hope you try this at home. I can't wait to dig into this. Thank you very much.